Hello and welcome to another Why Jesus. Today we're looking at forgiveness. Forgiveness, it's a bittersweet word. It's sweet because we all at some time have felt in need of it. It's bitter because uh, we have to own up to the need of it. It's own up time. So it is a bittersweet word. Um, Elton John really was right that sorry really is the hardest word to say. I think one great problem is we live in a no-blame culture, and uh, it's a can-do-no-wrong. And I guess political correctness, we often speak about political correctness gone mad, but we have seen things change. So uh, we don't have lazy people anymore. They are just um, energy deficient. Uh, we don't have thieves anymore. They're just people who are morally challenged. As for me, well, I'm not as young as I once was, but I'm not old. I'm chronologically advanced. One day I will be vertically challenged and um, living impaired, you might say. Um, but that's where we are, and those are the more humorous examples, but it can have some quite um, outreaching effects and consequences. Um, it's not my fault. That's the kind of attitude we have. It is the government, it's the health service, it's the environment, it's anyone or anything, but it's not me. Now, I'm a right one to talk. When I look back to, to my past, my past is one of addiction, and I was a slave to alcohol for, for years, but the last thing I wanted to do was to own up to the fact that I had a problem. Uh, the evidence was there for everyone to see, and yet it was the last thing that I wanted to do. Not so long ago, a famous sportsman uh, was found out to be having um, uh, affairs with, with uh, a whole series of, of, of women, uh, uh, adulterous relationships, one after the other, and yet what happened when uh, everything um, came to light well, um, he went for counselling. They uh, booked him in for counselling. Um, nothing to do with having to say sorry and no luck to his guilt, but it was an illness he had, of course. Now, um, you may have noticed that or we refer to the Bible all the time. Um, you don't want my opinion on life and, and what's to come in the, in the next life. Um, all we say is found in the Bible. And the Bible, although it's the most, the most glorious book, in the world, the world's bestseller still, yet it pulls no punches. And it says that our problem is sin. Just that three-lettered word, a small word with great consequences. Um, now, not that everyone is immoral or has an addiction problem, um, but each one of us we know very well that we're far from perfect. Uh, we know what it is to, to lie and to lust and to steal and to be angry and to, to criticize and judge. And so, you know, we know very well deep in our hearts that sin is a problem, although we wouldn't like to verbalize it. William Golding, in his book, Lord of the Flies, he pinpoints the problem. This is what he, he says. For too long, we've never looked farther than the rash appearing on the skin. It's time we look for the root of the disease rather than trying to treat the symptoms. And so the disease is sin. So unless we get the diagnosis right, we won't come up with the right cure. We all have sinned, the Bible says. We all have sinned. It's a level playing field. That's why it's often said that whenever you point the finger at someone, there are three fingers pointing back at yourself. Uh, every one of us has sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That is God's standard. God has a standard. And sin is serious. It's a serious problem. The Bible says the wages, that is the penalty of our sin, 
is death. And that is not just physical, but it is eternal separation from God. Sin separates us from a holy God. And that is worked out on an eternal basis. It is eternal separation. Jesus, uh, the most loving person ever to have walked this planet, he preached on hell a lot, simply because he loved us and wanted to warn us. He gave different pictures of it as being darkness, uh, fire, uh, torment, uh, separation, isolation. We all know what isolation is. You know, we, we are social beings. We want to interact with people, uh, but to be in darkness, alone, forever, in pain. All the goodness of God withdrawn. God is light. So withdraw light from the situation. You've got darkness. And all of those things that work out for our good will be removed. Now, that is why Jesus came. Why Jesus? God demonstrates his love in this way. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is the love of God uh, manifest in the most incredible way. Not that we love God, but that he loved us first and sent his son to be our saviour. I remember the most glorious day in my life when I received forgiveness. Uh, my past was, was, was so bad that um, you might say, well, it's you, you, good for you, mate, you needed it. But um, on that glorious day when I heard about Jesus Christ, that God should so love me, what have I done for God, except be a pain in the neck and worse? Um, but that glorious discovery that Jesus Christ really lived and really died in my place, and that on that day I knew that because he took my hell, I would enjoy his heaven. It's forgiveness. It is the gateway into the presence of God. And the Bible shows us that we can't keep brushing it away. It is a serious thing. God very helpfully gives us pictures in the Bible. Uh, and, and we see that sin and forgiveness or uh, the, the need for forgiveness for our sin, we have three very plain pictures. Uh, a picture of uncleanness, a, a picture that we're slaves, and a picture that we are debtors. So we are unclean. Every one of us, we are unclean in God's sight, and we need washing. And so we have those wonderful verses, like, for instance, when God invites us to come to him. Um, come, let us reason together says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like wool, white. Uh, no matter how deeply dyed our sin is, that it can be washed away, removed. Ah, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all unrighteousness, from all sin. And when it speaks about blood, when, when the Bible speaks about the blood of Jesus Christ, it means his cross, where, where he died in our place. And it's there where we can know cleansing for every single sin. Is there something in particular that haunts you and you think there is no way that can be cleansed? Yes, Jesus Christ can do it. But then we have the picture of being slaves. We are slaves and we need freeing. And Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. But if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. People like me, bound by addiction, can be released. But every one of us is a slave to sin. And we hate at times what we're doing, what we are. And yet Jesus Christ can set us free from that which binds us. Forgiveness is to be set free. And then we owe a debt God to God, that we are too poor to pay. The wages of sin is death, says the Bible. In other words, we owe God big time. But the gift of God is everlasting life. Now, this is tremendous news. That is why gospel means good news. Now, maybe you're a person that hasn't sought forgiveness because you know well, very well, that you need to forgive someone. That can be a tremendous barrier. 
that Jesus said, and as we forgive others their sin, he will forgive us our sin. One of my uh, heroes, I love to read uh, life stories, biographies, is a little Dutch lady called Corrie ten Boom. Corrie ten Boom suffered in a, a Nazi concentration camp and uh, suffered greatly and uh, saw and heard things that, that marked her for, for life in one sense, but she had every reason to be bitter. And yet she had to come to the point where one day she met the, the guard that was uh, so cruel to her and her sister. And yet she came to the point of being able to forgive him. And what a burden was lifted from her heart. She wrote this, Forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of resentment and the handcuffs of hatred. It is a power that breaks the chains of bitterness and the shackles of selfishness. Forgiveness is to be set free. And that's what is offered to you today. The God of heaven who loves you has sent his son to die for you. This day you can know that forgiveness for yourself. Well, I've been doing all the talking, but maybe you have questions and we would love to hear from you. So maybe you would like to comment below or go to our Facebook page or to our website page or maybe email us and you'll see the email address coming up shortly. But God bless you and we would love to hear from you.